Felicitations Adventures, welcome to Roll for Felicity. Uh, we're here with Good Society Arse and Farce, the grand finale. Um, sorry about the, the double live notification. OBS crashed on me just as soon as we started. Um, so I think it is working now. Uh, but I am here with my friends, um, and we are ready to get into some messy Jane Austen drama. Um, we are going to be having, I mean, we're maybe going to be having a wedding today is, is the plan, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Um, if you're new here, my name is Taylor. I use she, her pronouns, and I am going to be the facilitator for this game. Um, and then also this is my channel. I run a lot of different games. Um, this has been my first limited series. Um, all my other games are like one shots and very self-contained, but this one, uh, we've done like a story that goes through the whole thing. Um, and if this is your first time watching a Good Society stream, um, and afterwards you're like, ooh, I want to see what led up to this. I want to see the prequel for this drama. Um, all of the previous episodes are up on YouTube. So you can see them all. My YouTube is Roll for Felicity. Um, and they're on a playlist there that's, I think, just called Arson Farce. Um, and that also includes uh, a one shot we did of Good Society with all the same players, but playing different characters, which was a year ago this month uh, that we all played the game for the first time. Um, Wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think without further ado, I will allow my players to introduce themselves and we'll start with Mace. Do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. Uh, I'm Mace. I use she, her pronouns. Um... In this, I've been playing Constance Farthingbottom as the main character, as the main character that I play, um, as the most hopeless, uh, unstable horse girl you'll ever meet, and that's not going to change anytime soon, including in this game. So we'll just see <laughs> what other horse shit she gets up to. <laughs> horse shit from the horse girl. Uh, what about Ariel? Do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Hey, I'm Ariel. I use she/her pronouns. I'm playing Philip, who uses he, him pronouns. Um, Philip is just kind of a bad guy, trying to <laughs> thwart not only his sister, but probably everyone else. He doesn't think about other people. Yeah. The, the song Bad Guy by Billie Eilish was actually written about Philip Farthingbottom. About <laughs> Philip Farthingbottom, yeah. <laughs> She'll um, never admit it. <laughs> Just, she just it's not cool it. to admit you read books. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zavery, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Hi, I'm Zavery, she, her. I play um, Esther Peachtree, who is definitely getting married today and is a perfect angel who has never caused trouble ever in her life. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this horse shit. <laughs> Do you yes. want to uh, introduce yourself and your character? Sure. Uh, my name is Teg. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. And in this game, I play Nikola Popichka, who also uses they, them pronouns. Uh, a former-ish dancer who um, has caused a bunch of problems, but has rarely been aware of it. <laughs> Perfect. Um... Since this is the finale of the series, uh, we normally do little kind of get to know you questions. And I thought it would be fun to talk about some previous moments. This is our sixth episode. Uh, and like I said, the finale. Um, some previous things that we thought were fun during our uh, our game of Good Society. Um, and again, we'll start with Mace. What's, uh, what's a moment that you particularly enjoyed? Or just one that you remember um, is, also, I... is also fair. <laughs> no, I have been thinking about it. Um, I really liked um, the first time that I think Nicola interacted with the other Farley Wadding siblings uh, and kind of like dumbfounded both Constance and Mortimer, which led to the, the coining of the phrase a comely root, which was just the best thing that's ever happened. And also probably like one of the most riveting moments of Constance's life. So for in a couple different ways, just like the the weird unintentional horse riding double date that just rocked everyone's shit. Yeah, was I thought a really good one. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, yeah, Mortimer was distracted by a comely root uh, during a date. <laughs> um, Ariel, what's a moment from our game that you have enjoyed? 
Um, I really liked the nice little violent moment that Philip had when he decided to go pop in on Mr. Poppins and pop him in the face. That was a good time for me. <laughs> that was one of the moments you just said was... pop so many times. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the moments where I was Wait. like, you said what you were doing, and I was like, I would never have predicted <laughs> that that's, that's what you were going to say. <laughs> um, Savory, what about you? What, what's a moment that you particularly enjoyed? Um, I think that one of my favorite moments was when Philip came back from his like hunting trip or whatever to Esther's family's like garden party, fully dressed like a James Bond villain <laughs> with like the velvet <laughs> jacket with tails and like the eye patch on. <laughs> and everybody's just like, what the fuck? That was though, honestly, that's the hottest Philip has been in this entire thing. Yeah, that the the eye patch. Both physically <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Tay, what about you? Uh, I don't know if uh, what I thought of was uh, necessarily my favorite moment so much as just the one that sort of haunts me regularly. Um, It'll just pop unbidden into my mind. And it's also from the sort of unintended double date uh, where we went horseback riding Nicola with Constance and Mortimer. Uh, When Nicola was being a show off as they are wont to do, um and i thought to myself what makes sense in this moment of improvised dialogue is for nicola to uh compare themselves to a horse because they're very athletic um and it totally sounded like i was making a different (laughs) comparison and i the real person who exists in our world took a full 30 seconds to understand what the joke was for everyone else's brain i don't remember that i remember it every few days Uh, that's very good i feel like um i feel like i have so many that i want to say because i so like um after streams i'll go through and like clip moments that i really like um and like post them you know on tiktok or on twitter or whatever so I feel like I have so many things where I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember clipping this. I remember clipping this. Um, but I have to say, I'm going to say two because that's my stream and I can do what I want. Um, one, uh, which okay. was, and they're, they're kind of related, but one was when Mesa's character, uh, Constance, was confronted by her mother, who was basically like, I liked you better when you were boring. <laughs> Constance then <laughs> wrote a letter to Esther and was like, we need to see each other and included a horse figurine that Esther had given her when they were both younger, which I thought was like just such a good moment. And then when they did meet up, which was last episode, that whole conversation between the two of them with Constance, like Esther saying like, I can't like, I haven't committed to you and I can't commit to you because you never have told me what you want (laughs) and you don't ever say what you want. You're just doing things. Um, and then Constance just blurting out, like, everything that she wanted. Uh, it was just such a good scene. So those are those are probably two of my, uh, two of my favorite moments. Um, but truly, I could list so many. This has been such a pleasure playing with you all. Um, and I'm excited to see how it ends, but I'm also a little bit sad because it's been, it's been so much fun playing this game. Um, with that, though... I will mention a few things that you can do in chat. Um, So since this is our last game, um, I did this last episode and I wanted to do it again this episode um, as an incentive uh, for people to tip. Um, If anyone tips $10, which last time, shout out to Peebs. (laughs) Um, Peebs! Peebs tipped $10, which caused um, Esther Peachtree to be engaged and then uh, also... Mortimer Farley Bottom to propose to Nicola Popichka. Um, if anyone tips ten dollars during this stream, um, I have a couple other wild things that could happen that won't happen otherwise, or um, at the very least, they're not guaranteed to happen since I can't really control what the players do. Um, but 
Uh, I will put this in chat. So uh, there are a couple other things you can do. For 100 bits, you can choose one player and give them resolve token. For 300 bits, you can give all the players a resolve token. Um, for 500 bits, you can create and spread a rumor, which I'll just let people know might not have as big of an impact in this episode since it is like the last one but could still impact it and it would still be fun um or like i said for a thousand bits or ten dollars uh, i will introduce a game changing event that wouldn't have happened otherwise um and you can also i have a ko-fi so you can either use Tw bits which is twitch's currency or uh you can use ko-fi which is just regular money um also if there are moments during the stream that you think are great you can use exclamation point marker in chat um, I already told my mom I was stealing a thousand of her bits and she has no choice. Well, Peeves is going to be the MVP then. <laughs> so I was chaotic. about to be like, come on, guys. Let's like one up the last episode as the most chaotic one and make it this one. And yeah. Peeves is like, say, this say one less. should this be already there. Um, uh, yeah. And then, um, yeah, so if there's a moment that you like, you can put exclamation point marker in chat, uh, and that'll make a marker in the VOD for me that I can go back and clip that moment, which is extremely helpful to me. Um, and then the other thing you can do to help is watch, which you're already doing. So thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. I think with that, we can get into our game today. I don't think there's anything else I need to do. Uh, if it's a nor like a normal stream, I'll remember something else that I was supposed to say. Um, but uh, we are starting today the morning of Esther Peachtree's wedding uh, to Mr. Daniel Gibbons. Um, and uh, I think we should just start Esther. Um, first of all, how long do you think it's been since your engagement party uh, that your wedding has taken place? Um, probably like two months two or three months at the most. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So it's like late summer, maybe like early fall, because your engagement party was, I think, like kind of beginning midsummer. Um, so we're, we're facing another, maybe the, you know, it, the, the, um, the leaves are not quite changing yet, but you can feel every once in a while that briskness in the air that, that autumn is coming. Um, <coughs> and what is Esther doing? Uh, the morning of your wedding. This could be like the moment you wake up. This could be like at some point during getting ready. I'll let you kind of decide uh, what's what's happening right now. Um, I think that she is like getting dressed or like just dressed and like doing her hair and stuff. And I think that she probably is talking to like James or somebody about every every single thing that happened with Constance <laughs> and just being like you know like um like Daniel is really good for me like he's a really good person and we have a lot in common and like he's a professor and and I'm like a teacher and we both love the same things and, and like going on and on like trying to justify why she should go through with this wedding um if i may that i think that uh james like is just kind of like listening intently um and and being that type of good friend and just being like you know wow that's wild uh <laughs> and at the end of kind of the whole thing uh they're kind of like letting that simmer for a moment and then James is just like well then I mean it seems pretty straightforward but um why are you still you know thinking about it so much uh you're right I mean I already made a decision like this is happening today it's definitely yeah so there's no problem at all all right well seems all right then yeah <laughs> ah glad old james could help me out <laughs> um i would like to i don't know who honestly this would go to but i am willing to spend a resolve token i guess maybe 
to Esther um, for Edith, Miss Edith Elliot, to be like your flower girl or like attendant kind of like equivalent <laughs> to get Edith yeah. in here. Um, <laughs> I guess I, I'm not sure whether that would go to you or to Edith. Um. Uh, well, Edith is a little bit of a blabbermouth. That could be uh, tricky for. Um... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean... I'll, uh, yeah. Um, I almost said Constance Mace. Uh, yeah. Will you take a resolve token yes. for Edith to be the the flower girl or attendant or whatever for this one? I would. Cool. I would love to. Um... I'd love to have Edith do anything else. <laughs> She's been. <laughs> Edith is great. Mainly comedic relief. Maybe this will be her moment. She'll be like, this is my for your consideration reel. <laughs> um, what time of day do you think this is, Const or um, Esther? Like, do you think this is like mid you getting ready? Or do you think this is like, you know, breakfast? Or I'm assuming it's not just waking up because I don't know why James would be there. If you like you wake yeah. up and James is like in the room. <laughs> well, I mean, if they're, they're watching window. out. If they're watching out for farthing bottoms, they probably have security. And Esther was like, "I know, I know somebody." Um, oh, I've probably... been checking the perimeter. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's probably only like a couple hours before the wedding, so okay. whatever time the wedding is, just like imminently. Uh, so I think Edith would be there too maybe during this conversation if she's like kind of your attendant I think that uh, Edith like I don't know maybe was going to get her flowers set in the other room and like books in like throwing the basket everywhere and everything's getting spilled and she's just like oh Miss Esther I got the oh Miss Esther you look just like a fashion plate that looks amazing wow Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you're here, Edith. <laughs> oh, that's awfully sweet. Um, although, I'm sorry that your friend couldn't make it. Um, which friend do you mean? <laughs> oh, the one that you were camping with at the party. Um. <laughs> I don't know if Edith actually knows this. I kind of, maybe, you can tell spend, me if that's not okay. You can spend a resolve token. Actually, I'll I spend say, my own resolve token for Edith to have known this. Sure, I, why I not? You can <laughs> offer it to Zavery, probably. Uh, sure thing. Uh, so that's up to Zavery then, if Edith would have seen this. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, for, definitely. <laughs> awesome. Then that's for you. Cool. The one that you were camping with. You know, my father once tried to teach me how to make uh, a fire with two sticks, and then I forget why we I forget why we stopped. I think there may have been an accident, <laughs> but <laughs> it seems like it seems like that's what you guys were doing, and I and it seems like you guys were really good at camping. Oh, I I don't think I was camping. Maybe you're thinking of somebody else. Um, no, no, I was, I was definitely, because when people started fighting, my mom said, you should go right to the woods. You don't have to see this, Edith. And I said, okay, mom. <laughs> and then I ran right into the woods. And then I saw you hiding under a bush someplace. And it was with that other lady from the place that, that your father really doesn't like. And I thought, how nice that they're getting to talk in a nice, friendly way when there's a big fight going on. Mm. Oh, yeah. I thought it yeah. was nice. You're right. Why isn't yeah. she coming today, Miss Esther? Why isn't she coming? She is busy. I think that she, um, well, she told me that she's leaving and joining the church. So that's probably where she is. Oh, that makes sense. So yeah. are you going to go say goodbye after this? Um, I don't. I mean... I don't think that well, I... Well, Miss Esther, you never let me leave sessions without you saying goodbye to me. So that doesn't seem fair. That, that... would make you a, a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> that, you're right. That is true. But the thing is that I 
then say goodbye letter already. So we don't need to go visit to say goodbye. Hmm. Well, then I suppose she should come here to say goodbye to you. Because that's what good friends do, Miss Esther. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I don't think that she wants to do that. She's probably very busy, so. It seemed like she really missed you when she was holding on to your pinky finger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, well, you know, sometimes people just have to leave to go to work and do their jobs. And, you know, her work is very important so she probably doesn't need to be here just for, you know, a wedding. Miss <laughs> Esther, I don't think that grown-up people make one bit of sense, and I hope that I never have to be one. <laughs> I hope so, too. <laughs> I think with that, um, I think we should cut over. So for this... Um, for this novel phase, we're doing uh, what's called a split chapter in Good Society. Um, and so we're going to be cutting between things that are all happening at the same time, but in different places. And I think it only makes sense uh, to see this is two months after the events of the last session. Um, where is Constance? What is Constance up to today? Um, I have been thinking about when exactly she would go to that yeah. parish that she was offered. And for like big drama reasons, I was like, what if it was the day of the wedding? Um, and like all of her stuff was being like packed up and put on the cart, yeah. like that, that moment. Um, but she's like, I don't know, having one last sort of morning meal or like spending, sp spending some time with her family before she, before she goes. This is um, kind of perfect um because i think that the farthing bottoms are going to have a much more eventful morning than any of you anticipated because oh my God. we got ten dollars <laughs> um <Yes. and> yeah <laughs> One of the things... Chaos that... cornflakes for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, chaos cornflakes for breakfast. One of the things that we talked about uh, when we first started the game, we had our um, collaborative phase. And one of the things that we wanted was for someone to get disinherited. Um, mm. There are three farthing bottoms. Two of them have not been on very good behavior. And one of them has had an offer directly from the British military, which has quite elevated his, um, his social capital. Um, so, uh, Constance, you're kind of going around getting ready to leave. Um, Philip, uh, what do you think that you're doing this morning? Um, getting back from a hunting trip. Okay, yeah, so you're, you know, coming back from a hunting trip, and maybe, like, it was early morning, like, some kind of early morning hunt. You're bringing back your catch. Um, you come to the breakfast table, and Hilda Farthingbottom, Lady Hilda Farthingbottom, is seated at the table with Mortimer, and she says, Ah, Constance, Philip, I was hoping that you would come by for breakfast this morning. It's been too long since we've had a proper family breakfast. Um, of course, Mother. I would, I would hate to miss it before I left. Although I'll be back soon. But, uh, of course, happy to join you too. Um, there's no easy way for me to say this. Um, I've been talking with Mortimer. Constance. You have been previously made aware that um, you've had a more limited um, access to funds recently. Your allowance has been cut, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I think it's served you very well. Uh, you're going out in the world. You're making a name for yourself. Um, Philip, I have been hearing some very disturbing um 
news of your conduct. Um, and I, I haven't said anything. You're an adult. But at this point, the Farthing Bottom name, due to your actions, is considerably brought down in the world. Um, and by contrast, Philip, Mortimer has been upstanding. He recovered from a deathly illness. He's been giving more and more talks about botany. And, I've been led to understand, has been issued um, an invitation to the military, which I, frankly, have never heard of happening before. Um, I feel as if the best way to tell you all this is to do it as quickly as possible. Um, Constance and Philip, I think it's best that you make your own way in the world. Um, and I believe that the Father and Bottom Estate should rightly go to Mortimer. I am a gassed mother. Have I done anything ill to you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I literally just got lightheaded. <laughs> she stares daggers at you and says, Philip, would you like for me to say all of the things that I know that you've done recently? Hmm. I suppose not, mother. I suppose I'll go all on my own way and just resort to piracy. <laughs> she says, Philip, I, I've been speaking with um, the barrister, and I think it would be advisable that whatever you do going forward in your life, you no longer use the farthing bottom name. Well, I suppose I should take my leave after such <laughs> accusations against me in my name, which is no longer my name. Mother, <laughs> siblings, <laughs> I think he has like a collection of ducks or whatever. He just like tosses on the table and leave. Have these bird cadavers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Um, thank you for the ten dollars, peeps. <laughs> I, I think next up for Philip, would he his only friend would be Nicola, and he might want to go see them if that. Yeah, that, I think that would be good. Um, oh my gosh, for some reason, so, my Adobe is just like, oh, do you want to open a bunch of other windows? Would you like to do that? I don't know why. I don't know why you would. <laughs> um. But do you though? <laughs> do I? Not really. Think about it. Uh, mm. Do I want to open Google okay. Chrome, which crashes the stream? No, I actually don't think I do. <laughs> I didn't click on it. I don't see why I would. Um, I am going to uh, to for um, Hilda to have known the things that Philip has been up to. Um, I am going to spend the resolve token associated with Philip is trying to get his siblings disinherited. Uh, for Hilda to know that. Just to keep it all above board. Because that's what those rumors are for. Um, so yeah. Uh, Philip is headed over to see Nicola. Uh, Nicola, what are you up to this morning? So, um, I've been put in an odd position. And it, it's like everyone, everyone in this game is in an odd position right now but the reason i'm in one is that for reasons i don't fully understand both you and ariel have just chosen to make nicola's life very easy <laughs> <laughs> so uh i think they are in the house that they now just kind of have <laughs> Yeah, last session, Ariel Rich. decided to have Grant, <laughs> Nicola's uncle, uh, Maybe. give them his 
house and belongings as he would be traveling to South America. That's, that's <laughs> true. You did also even specify <laughs> his belongings. Like, I had even been thinking, okay, <laughs> if Grant is moving out and has disappeared to somewhere in South America, you know, maybe Nicola is in this now sl- somewhat emptier house, just kind of like looking around, wondering what to do with it. But all of his belongings are still there. Yeah. You don't have, so Nicola doesn't I'm have just... money, I will say. Um, Nicola doesn't have money, just has a house and all the things in yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe still just sort of like going from room to room, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll also ask you this. It's been two months since this happened. Uh, Mortimer did say like, hey, if you want to talk... Um, like, has been, I think we decided, like, weekly, basically, been sending you, like, updates on his schedule to be like, hey, like, here's, you know, here's what I've got going on if you want to, if we want to run yeah. into each other. In in maybe the most directly uh, cowardly move that they've they've made in a while, uh, Nicola has essentially been sending back very short not like terse but just like sparse Mm -hmm. uh i would say notes that is just like i have this house i gotta figure (laughs) out so like oh we definitely will talk about this yeah and just kind of like you know punting it down the field uh constantly i think just to make it a little bit more juicy okay i have to close I have to close out of the Good Society rules because it does just keep opening Chrome. So we're going, we're going no rules. <laughs> if anyone needs to know the rules, no rules just right. you'll have to figure it out. Going rogue. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I think with this, it's been two months. I think the first month you were getting the the like the letters every week. The second month, you got one at the beginning of the month and haven't gotten one, like, in, in a couple weeks. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Just to heighten the stakes a little bit. Yeah, God, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, nonetheless, that's, that's pretty much how they're spending that morning i i think they're just like okay i have to go to this wedding later (laughs) yeah um Um, yeah philip uh arrives at uh what did we say the name of the it's um rumpus manor (laughs) yes i think is that ron's place or or was that the peach tree estate the Peach or... tree estate Peachtree was state is like windbreak something. It's oh yeah, yeah. Or cliffs. <laughs> I think. It yeah. Was... <laughs> yeah, maybe it was just Rumpus Manor was Grant's place. It so. was just Rumpus Manor, I think. Okay. I remember. I remember specifically Ariel saying the words Rumpus Manor. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably been long enough that Nicola has put together like, okay, I have this place and these things, but I don't really have money, so I don't really have a staff anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think they just kind of answer the door th- themselves. <laughs> Philip is there. My friend, I need, I, I need your advice. Why are you dressed like this? Uh, I just got back from hunting. Um, oh, you didn't catch anything? That doesn't seem like you. Uh, yes, I, um, graciously left it for my family to use oh, how nice. um, <laughs> it would seem that uh, my mother has decided to give Constance and my inheritance to Mortimer and I am just at a loss at this illogical proposition I had to come discuss it with you post haste um, I had started to open the door as if I was going to gesture for you to come in and then you say that and I kind of stop opening the door <laughs> okay oh, but, but, but wait wait <laughs> it's I mean it's open I'm just like standing it instead of like getting out of your way and gesturing for you to come in uh, hang on let, let me get this straight so your your esteemed mother 
um, has has actively disinherited you and your sister. Yes, it would appear she has lost her marbles. And you, you and your takeaway is that that's insane of her to do. Of course. <laughs> what else? What else could possibly? Be? You know something, Philip. I I've been trying to think of how to um help you for a, a little while now. I'm not sure if you realize this. Uh, because what's always been fun for you and me, it never seemed to hurt anyone. Um, you hmm. seem to have left that behind a long time ago, and I don't know what advice I can give if you're still sure that that's the case. Huh. I suppose I have not been looking at this through the correct lens. <sighs> Nicola, thank you for your illuminations. I think I need to ride off on my own for a bit. Right, okay. I mean, I was going to say you can still come in, but it's just going to be me and you in this big house and I've never cooked anything in my life, so I, I wouldn't even know what to offer you. Oh, um, I'm afraid I don't know how to cook either. I never learned. I was hoping, but okay. <laughs> um... Um, well, I suppose I'm going to go to the local tavern and, uh, think about my next step. Um, you know what? You did ask me for advice. Can I give you one piece of it? Yes. Yes. Find somewhere else to think. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I suppose you're right. The alcohol has been doing a number on my mind recently. Uh, yes. Well, uh, was when oh, when when your mother told you this? Uh, was was Mortimer there? Yes, I believe he was just sitting right there with my mother, as if nothing outrageous was happening. Okay, just checking. <laughs> Why so much curiosity to be curiosity about my brother? I just I mean, I I guess I was just curious what his reaction would be to that. Well, I'm sure he's thrilled. Um <sighs> uh, well, how is this manner, this new manner that you have acquired recently? There are hidden rooms everywhere. <laughs> I've been exploring for what feels like the last entire month, and there's little panels in the walls, and there's things hidden inside them. You, are, I've found at least three knives this morning that were <laughs> hidden inside of other things that I already thought were weapons, so... Well, your uncle is sure... Uh... Your uncle, right? Uh, well, he sure was. Is uh, quite an animated fellow. Um, mm. I would say that you deserve nothing more but to have this wonderful house. I do wish you the best, Nicola. I'm sorry for being so wayward. It may be a while until we see each other again. As long as we see each other again. I think he just turns and walks away. <laughs> I, I think I... Uh, I... Watch Philip go for a while. Um, I would really love to spend my monologue token on Philip at this moment, though. Yeah. Yeah, what's Philip's uh, internal monologue right now? Um, honestly, he had been a hot mess. Like he'd been pretty intoxicated and probably just going off and not knowing how to deal with his issues. Um, 
I think also he was hoping there was a secret part of him that was hoping that Esther and Constance would be together to kind of get rid of Constance from the house. Um, but then he started to think, oh, well, maybe Constance would actually be quite happy. And maybe I sh maybe in his leaving and everything, things will actually turn out better for his siblings. And he's starting to think that, you know what? Maybe he is the bad guy. <laughs> oh. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Felt real sad about Philip at the last minute there. <laughs> 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 Yeah, your Philip is, uh, you know, walking away sadly uh, as Nicola watches uh, with this very, I imagine, rumpus man. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my Perfect, yes. Perfect use, Melanie. I imagine rumpus manner as being very, um... Uh, oh, I'm not sharing computer audio with you guys. Melanie just played Hello Darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I can see this. <laughs> um, let me uh, let me share that real quick. Oops, I just remembered that I'm doing this. Let's do that. Okay, so you'll be able to hear sound effects. Um, I imagine Rumpus Manor as being very like stark uh, and like dark, uh, you know, kind of gothic almost architecture. Um, and so yeah. Uh, Nicola standing at the door, Philip walking away. We get this big wide shot of Philip, like, you know, just trudging away and thinking, maybe I am the bad guy. Um, and I think um, we, we got Constance a little bit uh, before breakfast with the description of, like, you know, that you were moving. But I would love to cut back to Constance after this disinheritance we know that philip yeah. just like left uh what did constance do with that information i think that like she was definitely like quiet at first and like not still shocked i think to a certain degree um uh and it's just kind of been like sitting and processing it and then like philip storms out and all of that and has like stayed quiet and like watched him go maybe thought about going after him, but then like instead kind of just like turned back to Hilda and was like, mother, does that mean that that's final? Did you say that's fine or that's final? That's final, okay. final, sorry. <laughs> does that mean that's final? <laughs> well, Constance, you've, you've done quite well for yourself in, in my opinion. I think that this period of austerity has been good for you. But I'm no longer a farthing bottom at all? Oh, no, Constance, my dear. You're still a farthing bottom. It's just you won't be getting the estate. You're welcome in the home and welcome to visit whenever you'd like. But, but you have a life of your own now. You have that parish and you can, of course, can keep the farthing bottom name but philip i mean philip is up to all sorts of things i you things you may already know about apparently many things have been going on in this house that i did not have knowledge of is there anything in the world that would is there anything in the world that i could do that would make me not a farthing bottom anymore <laughs> <laughs> she kind of looks thoughtful and says Constance I've been harsh on you but as I've said I think it's been beneficial and as harsh as I've been I can't imagine anything you could do that would make you not a farthing bottom she slams her hands on the dinner table and says I'll be right back and <laughs> runs out the door <laughs> shouting to the the carriage and the people loading it up front being like just head straight there I'll be there later <laughs> gets a horse and starts booking it for the church uh the you do that so full like, gallop the no jacket no hat who gives a shit <laughs> just go the the cinematography is very like the music picks up 
Uh, <laughs> you, like, run out the door. You're, like, calling for things. You're racing. And then we do get a brief scene cuts back of just Mortimer and Hilda just eating <laughs> breakfast in silence. <laughs> and Mortimer, Mortimer just says, this omelet is uh, quite good. <laughs> The only thing he says <laughs> during this whole this whole meeting. Um, yeah, I think. What do we want to see next? Do we want to get another little bit of Esther getting ready for the wedding? Or is there something else that we so. want to see? We've got to be getting close to, like, go time there. Yeah. It feels like, yeah. We also haven't um I would love for Zavery to describe what the wedding dress looks like and like what the wedding itself looks like. And now that we're, you know, getting close to it. Um I think that everything is just a little bit like like her dress is very like extravagant. But you can tell that it's, like, not really her style. Like, it doesn't match the things that she has worn before. And, like, the same with, like, the venue, like, the church and everything. Like, it's all, like, really, like, beautiful and proper. But it doesn't, like, match her yeah. personality. <laughs> um, Can it be... Um, like, cause this whole time you've been like dressing in pastels and like trying to appear younger than you are. Can it be like that the colors are like very pastel and like, you know, cause you've been trying to project this image of innocence for, <laughs> for the past few Yeah, sessions. definitely. Um, here's what I'll say. Um, I would like to, I think offer, uh, Esther, a resolve token from. Esther has so many. I'm like, I, the I'm power. Like Scrooge McDuck of resolve. Yeah. So many. Um, I can do anything. <laughs> I I would like to offer uh, a resolve token from Mr. Daniel Gibbon, um, to have found a certain letter that you previously received. Um, a letter from Constance uh, that she sent to you last session. Um, the one with the drawing in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> you should, <laughs> should find it. Um. Cool. <laughs> So I think there's a private moment. We have five resolve tokens now. Um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Absolutely loaded. <laughs> the, the rest of the session, you can pretty much do whatever you want for the finale, I think. Um, but um, I think there's um, a quiet moment where at least it seems like no one else is around. Because I, I don't know if this was a thing in Regency Society but the whole thing of, like, the groom not seeing the bride before the wedding. So, like, you know, maybe you and um, Daniel haven't really seen each other today yet. Um, but you're you're in some kind of quiet moment, you know, getting ready, centering yourself, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and there is a knock on the door. Uh, the door to whatever room you're in. Maybe, maybe, probably not your bedroom, but maybe, like the room you've been getting ready in. Okay. Yeah, um, come in. Uh, yeah, Daniel uh, quickly opens the door, lets himself in, closes it behind him. Um, he looks sad. Darling, what, what's the matter? Um, he's, he's holding um, a letter in his hand. And he says, um, I, um, your father sent me over to your house to, um, pick some things up. And, um, while I was there, I happened upon this, um, piece of correspondence. Um, I thought it odd. Mm. 
Well, people have been, you know, sending well wishes all week uh, for the wedding. You know that. Yes. But I don't um, think that she can, like, see. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. He's holding. he's holding it and kind of just, like, hitting, like, hitting it against his hand, kind of, and, like, looks kind of, like, reluctant and says, my darling, there are, there are no secrets between us, are there? Um, like, what kind of secrets? I don't know what you mean. <sighs> There's that moment during our engagement party when your friend James came over and implied that you had some sort of ill wishes toward Maestro Popichka, which I had not been made aware of. Um, and I did happen upon, um, on one of our visits, I had seen a letter on your desk from James that asked where things stood uh, with running them out of town. And I thought it must be some kind of misunderstanding. My intended would never do something like that. Um, and then today I find this letter from Constance who I had been told by you that you were no longer friends. And this letter seems very friendly indeed. Um, I think there must have been a misunderstanding indeed. You saw Nicola and I had the engagement party he said that we were best friends. Um, how could there be any animosity between us? Um, they had a very lovely toast and were more than kind. I don't understand how you could have that misconception. So, and um, So you didn't ask James to run them out of town? I no, of course not. Uh, you know, James can be so um, boisterous and exaggerated. That was something that, you know, James was just joking about. I never said anything like that. But I don't know James very well at all. I mean, I don't know. I've introduced you several times. He was also um, at the party. And that, I mean, you saw everything with your own eyes. What is it that you're questioning now? Uh, maybe just wedding day jitters. <laughs> and he hands you the letter and says, I'm. I'm sorry to have doubted you. Um, I um, I shouldn't have been I shouldn't have been snooping about um, amongst your things. I uh, he just turns and leaves the room. Okay. <laughs> um, that's that scene. Uh, what do we want to see next? Is there something else, um, Xavery, that you want to do <laughs> in, res in response to that, or? <laughs> we able to, if we're not in scenes, I would love to spend a monologue token on Esther to see yeah. what's going on in her head right now. Yeah. Can I just pop that one? Yeah, you don't have to be in a scene for that. So yeah, uh, Esther, what's love your it. eternal monologue right now? I think that she was, like, trying to be very careful to 
not to say anything that wasn't like literally true like she yeah. and um but also she's kind of thinking that like if Daniel is like not trusting her at this point and they're about to get married that she can kind of like use that as an excuse to be like well how can I possibly marry you when you're like accusing me of stuff <laughs> like 30 minutes before <laughs> our wedding vows like, yeah um so yeah so like in her mind it's just kind of like she was like maybe leaning towards staying with Daniel and now she's like well now like she kind of has like an escape <laughs> like yeah you look down at this letter that Daniel just handed you um actually I'd like to spend a resolve token um I think this is from Daniel too um I don't think it goes to anyone um but two things you look down at this letter first of all you see the um the date that Constance is supposed to be moving which is today which you already knew but like you know this is just a reminder this is today that Constance is supposed to be moving in the letter uh presumably the thing that Daniel the reason why Daniel was looking around in your stuff is this locket that he had given you um and presumably was like oh I'll bring this to Esther maybe she'll want to wear it today you know maybe it doesn't like go with your dress or something like that like that's why you weren't wearing it but like uh the reason he was looking around was not necessarily because he didn't trust you but it was like oh I'm already at this house like looking for something else I noticed Esther didn't have this necklace I'll grab that too while I'm there and then happened upon this correspondence. Um, so that's what you're holding in your hand. This letter from Constance and this locket from your betrothed. What do we want to do next? Great question. <laughs> <laughs> Hard I mean, to know. Shall we do the wedding? Yeah. Do we want to do the wedding Shall next? We, yeah. Or do we have any Constance scenes we want to is, do before? Constance is just en route right yeah. now, so nothing for me. What? I guess I'll ask this. Um, first of all, is there anything that Nicola wants to do before the wedding? with this new information about Mortimer is my first question. Second question to Ariel is if Philip, I don't know if you're planning for Philip to be at the wedding or what you're planning for Philip to do. Um, but <laughs> it would be nice for you to have something to do for the rest of the. <laughs> yeah. You being the in the, the game would be pretty cool. I think. <laughs> what, what did you say? Tay, what'd you say? Oh, I was saying, yeah, you you being like in the rest of the game, I think would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you've you've had <laughs> one one character you control, Grant, you've had move. <laughs> Irish morning. goodbye. Ariel's just nurking all her characters. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm like, oh, we're just Yeah, just... Ariel just doesn't want to play. You can't fire me, I quit. <laughs> Um, if you wanted to, I mean, I think it'd be fun for Philip to be at the wedding for some reason with like, I have nothing to lose. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like that's, that's. Maybe it'll be a moment of redemption for him. Let's. Can't oh, throw him out. Yeah. That would be good. Maybe not. Yeah. I think of some ways that could work. Okay. Um. Is there a way I can help Constance to the wedding? That's what I was thinking. Or help Constance get in, maybe. Hmm. I was going to say, like, I. I have a weird sort of like hope for going into this and it it's like a scene with Philip and Constance is a thing I would really like to see at this point I yeah. think. Yeah. I would love to see that too. Yeah. What you if know, we both arrive there at the same time? 
Also, last session, Esther did kind of write a letter to her father being like, you're being kind of an asshole <laughs> um, during all of this with the whole, like, Philip thing. Yeah. So yeah. maybe if they, I don't know, maybe they'll both apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Like Philip and a, William, maybe. or like Philip and your father. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's really funny. That makes up. Um, yeah. So I think while you two, while uh, Constance and Philip are thinking about what they want to do, Tig, did you have? It looked like you maybe had something you wanted to do with regards to Mortimer. I like. Yeah, there's like. What's annoying is that I can't think of any way for this to make even farcical sense <laughs> the other thing that i that is like fascinating me a little bit at the moment is that um like nicola and and uh esther haven't had like a a conversation since almost the beginning of this game like in a direct way they've been in the same place and kind of like affected each other a little bit here mm -hmm. and there um but i truly can't think of any way that makes sense to me <laughs> i'm is there a i don't know if this is if this could be explained this might i guess this is this might be metagamey if this is something that philip wants to do can philip be part of the the brigade getting constance in and nicola be part of the brigade getting esther to that's to like, kind to of like exactly get her right to the was... right to the precipice of like, hey, Constance is on the way, and she's disinherited now, and she's coming for you specifically. Well, maybe you yeah, don't, know, but like, I, she's coming but like, for you. she's disinherited. She's coming. Coming. I, don't, I don't know that part. But she's coming for you. Um, but like, but yeah, that Philip and Nicola now being on opposite ends of this of this sort of like, hey, 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 let's yeah. make this happen. Thing. I the, could the, be hysterical. This is maybe dumb but the only thing that um is occurring to me at the moment is uh that for the first time in their life maybe they're early to a thing <laughs> um and just kind of like because frankly they've been wandering around an empty house all day and they're just like i may as well just go may as well go <laughs> um which is usually how i'm early for stuff too <laughs> uh just finding knives everywhere in an empty house and i just go nah, i should be somewhere else um but just fully accidentally wandering into whatever room esther is in yeah uh is is the only thing that's occurring to me if if that's kind of a if that sounds like a fun direction so can like Daniel be like across the hall or like the other side <laughs> somewhere like just within earshot so she can be like oh Nicola I'm so glad um, that you can make it oh that's so funny actually just to like prove her point yeah to really it's overdo like, it oh, yeah my friend yeah um hi Savory, go ahead and spend a resolve token I think this is just like not to uh I guess technically I'll take it for James or not James, sorry, uh, Dan Daniel. Yeah. I still can't remember his <laughs> freaking name. Uh, I'll take a result token for <laughs> Daniel um, that he is where you want him to be so that he can overhear <laughs> this conversation. That's so good. <laughs> okay, so... Um, all right, so what's happening? Philip is on his way to intercept Constance. Um still in hunting gear still in hunting gear <laughs> hell yeah nicola <laughs> obviously is uh on their way to talk to uh esther to basically be like hey some shit is going down <laughs> um yeah. that you might want to know about um which of the um let's do i think dramatically it would be better if we do nicola and esther first and then do sense. Constance and Philip, if if we're cool with that. Um, yeah, I think that tries. Yeah. 
Uh, so Nicola, you are kind of wandering around and stumble upon um, <laughs> Esther. Um, Esther, do you think you're alone still slash again, or do you think that someone else is there? Um, maybe Edith is there. <laughs> it would be great if Edith was there, I will say. <laughs> Just like swing, sitting on something, swinging her legs around. like Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's supposed to be helping, but she's not really. <laughs> oh, you're that little. Uh, she's counting child. the petals in her basket. <laughs> One, two, three. What? Oh, I lost track again. One, two. Sorry. <laughs> it's uh, how how early am I? What time is it? Oh. I am bad at clocks. The big hand goes What does to... that mean? Is there one in here that I could just look at myself? What are you talking about? Let's see if I can go and find one. And she just goes to find a clock. She just leaves. All right. <laughs> um, I guess I will also try to find a clock. <laughs> Um, oh, are you following? Are you following Edith around? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, have no I thought faith that Edith that was. This I... child is going to find a clock. <laughs> Sorry, uh, was I was I thought that Edith was in the room with Esther. Yes, I oh, think she. I think okay. Sure, yeah. That's my. Oh, okay, cool. So before she's that. before before she says that she's like, I'll be right back, Miss Esther. I need to go and find a clock for the guest, and just runs <laughs> for the guest. Okay. Yeah. Is that normally like... something if a flower girl does? Sure. Or... <laughs> um, you know, we really just let her do her own thing. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah, it's so good to see you, though. I'm glad you can make it. And she gives him a, like, um, a kiss on like both cheeks, <laughs> like very friendly. They kind of like hesitantly return it, and again are are having that that thing where they're like oh we're we're at this point oh, okay <laughs> just, just never aware of where esther is apparently at with them because also earlier in the story esther <laughs> caused this whole drama because she bumped into nicola and was like nicola is over familiar and now esther's like yeah. i'm gonna kiss nicola on the cheek yeah. <laughs> like besties do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this sort of weird frenemies turn is sort of fun. <laughs> I do like it. Um So yeah. it's a it's a big day, huh? Yeah, and you won't believe how um long all of these preparations took so much goes into this. Um Never been much of a planner, personally. I, uh, it's really strange. yes. I just sort of do things, and they work out, and sometimes they don't. And uh, it's strange. I have a house now, you know, just a house that's mine. Uh, how that can happen sometimes, and I well, I mean, I didn't plan for that, and now I'm thinking maybe I. I, sh I should plan more. Does that make sense? That makes a lot, you know, just perfect sense. You should plan more. Um, have a seat. Tell me all about it. What, what, how did you, uh, what happened? Oh, well, uh, it's, it's not, um, it's not much of a story. I, I, uh, I've been staying with a relative, I, I think, and uh, he just sort of went to South America. I don't know why still. Um, but I'm sure he had a good reason. And and he left me a house. No money, so I can't pay anyone to work in the house. Uh, but that's that's fine. It's um well, do you know what it is, Esther? I've been thinking a lot about uh, what I wanted when I came here. And um, I'm not sure that it's 
I don't know. Uh, it wasn't the plan. It was just something I thought I wanted. And I used to think I wanted some other thing, and then it turned out to just be, uh, you know, maybe nothing. And then, and then I came here because I thought I wanted something else. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I am. Um... I might know what you mean by that. Um, so it sounds lonely, like it's just you in this house. By oh, yourself. that's that's fine. Um, it would be a problem if I was the sort of person who thrived on the attention of others. Uh, you know, like if I was a, a performer <laughs> of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's not you at all. No, not not these days. Mm. Also, I just had the strangest news. Uh, uh, I don't remember. Do you know the the farthing bottoms? Yes, okay. I am familiar. I never remember who knows who. You know. Mm. <laughs> Yes, so uh, uh, apparently uh, uh, Philip, who uh, you know, I've known for many, many years, uh, Philip has been uh, disinherited, which is big news, and, uh, and also his sister Constance. Do you know Constance? I do. So what were you going to tell me about Constance? Right, she's uh, she's also disinherited. She's uh, she's not getting the estate, which huh. is um, you know, she's. Uh, I mean, Philip, we can see that happening. But we all knew that was going to happen. I that's think. not much of a surprise. But Constant, you said. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I mean, she's um, she's. A, a friend she's a good friend and and uh, i think she's a good person um but you know I, I suppose that she's acted in ways that her family did not um approve of um but you know i'm i'm sort of hopeful mm -hmm. for her uh i just think that she's been sort of tied to her family for a long time and i hope that maybe it gives her a bit more uh, freedom to choose you know hmm. um yeah <laughs> and i think esther is fully not tuned into this conversation anymore <laughs> she's just like <laughs> just thinking about like constance basically as Esther, the visual we see is Esther looking down, thinking about Constance. The audio that we hear is the sound of hoofbeats as Constance Farthing Bottom is on her way to break up this wedding. Um, and I think let's do the scene with um with Constance and Philip, uh, and after that, I think we'll take our break. Uh, so Constance. You are racing to this wedding. Um, uh, and I guess how does how does this meet up between Philip and Constance happen? I think Constance Yeah, I was looking at Philip Caesar so just like Constance. Just like booking it through Constance. maybe even like town. Maybe she's just yeah. like in the street. Yeah. Just like full gallop. Um she stops. And she's yeah, like, maybe our horses I'm... almost intersect. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to horse too? Like, Ooh, cool, what? horse crash. <laughs> <laughs> horse crash. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if it ever happened. Horse <laughs> drift off to the side to avoid each other. <laughs> it's really cool. Jane Austen presents the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah. Derbyshire drift. <laughs> no. There it is. <laughs> yep. 
That's good. <laughs> so nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Constance stops, and but like you can tell, like she's still fiddling with the reins. She's like, Philip, I'm so sorry. I will talk to you later. I really need to get someplace. No, this is our huge you, you have to wait. I have to say something to you before you go and do whatever okay, you're well. about to do. I want to say I am. I am sorry. I besmirched your good name and for no reason other than my own greed and I'm starting to begin to see um how much terrible things I did to you but I wanted I wanted you to know that all I I want for you now is happiness and I really do think that you had happiness once with your good friend Esther and I assume and I hope that's where you're off to next we really must be triplets because yes, that is exactly where I'm going. Philip, I forgave you before you ever did anything. You're my little brother. And I knew that you would sort yourself out one way or the other. And you didn't have to be such a, a bastard about it, but I think ultimately this is probably the best place either of us could have been because now you can do whatever you want and I can go and do whatever I want. Yeah. And Mortimer is probably happier than he's ever been. Yes. This is the best thing that could have happened. Maybe Mortimer will stay happy um, in our manor forever, and maybe one day we'll be able to... Re well, maybe I'll be able to reconnect with Mother. Um, in the meantime, I'll figure out what it is that I truly want, but I have an idea. I think, if you don't mind, I'll come with you to this wedding. Might as well not embarrass Please. yourself by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> What, what do they say about great minds? And we're just, wah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get to it. Um, yeah. The, uh, the farthing bottoms are, two of the farthing bottom triplets are headed to the, uh, oh, what was it? Windbreak. Oh, no, it's not at the manor. It's at the church. Uh, as Avery said, there's a church. So you're headed to the church. Um, That's a butt name for the church, though. <laughs> yeah, we can think of a name for the church. Uh, Esther right. has just had some news, um, which I will say, I don't know how much it means to Daniel, but he also heard that conversation uh, because <laughs> that's what Xavier wanted. Uh, <laughs> he heard, he heard uh, Esther being nice to, um, to Nicola and then also heard the rest, which honestly, who knows what uh, he thinks of that. Um, I think the next thing will be this wedding, um, which means I think it's a good time for us to take our break um, before we get to the wedding itself. Uh, chat, we're going to be back in 15 minutes uh, with the thrilling conclusion of Good Society Arse and Farce. We're going to have the rest of, well, the wedding, the rest of this novel phase, and then we're going to have the epilogue, and then that's going to be it for our story. Um, so stick around. While we're on the break screen, you'll be able to see more information about uh, the players today. Um, and also you'll be able to see my cat. So that's fun as well. Um... <laughs> Do you all want to wave goodbye to chat? Bye, chat. Felicitations! We are back for the second half of Good Society Arse and Farce, the finale. It's been a wild ride so far. I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, but before <laughs> we get into that, I'm going to let my guests reintroduce themselves just in case you missed the first half. Um, and, uh, first I guess I'll say, uh, my name's Taylor, she, her pronouns if you're new here. Uh, I am the person behind Roll for Felicity. Um, I stream a lot of different stuff on here. A couple things I have coming up, um, I am doing a stream of Petal Paladins this Saturday. Um, and next month, um, I'm gonna be doing a stream of, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be doing a stream of Mouse Ritter next month, which will be uh, one of my serialized one shots. So we'll have some returning guests and characters. Um, and then also I'm going to be streaming a game of um, uh, another recurring one, which is uh, Basic Witches. Uh, that's gonna be the middle of next month. Um, so those are some things I have coming down the pipe. Pipe, is that what it's called or pike? Anyway, it's one of those two words. <laughs> I think <laughs> both work. I think coming but... down, uh, coming uh... down the stream. I guess. 
Um, Come down the turnpike. <laughs> Come down, down the turnpike. The mountain. Um, take the <laughs> down the mountain. Rescue me from this and introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'm going to go ahead and distract from Taylor falling apart for a moment mm-hmm. by me uh, struggling equally to think of what I might even plug. My name is Tag. Uh, I, in this series, am playing Nikola Popichka. Um, I also stream sometimes follow me here i guess or don't i'm not your boss i also make uh role-playing games sometimes go look at those or don't i'm not your boss um and i uh i was just thinking um i'm in some very very early planning stages mostly quietly in my head without talking to anyone about it um of planning a stream of a game that I wrote called uh, Rafenheim, which if you have enjoyed this, um, there's a little bit of crossover in that it's kind of a literary inspired, uh, very silly kind of thing, um, except it's gothic horror and romance as opposed to uh, like Regency comedy romance, I guess. What's silly about um, this, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the funny part. <laughs> Wait, about, hang on. Do you mean about this series called Arse and Farce? <laughs> is that what you're asking me? What is silly about that? Or. Okay. <laughs> um, but I don't have a date for that. So it's not even really a plug. It's just sort of a thing that you can keep an eye out for uh, on my Twitch channel. Um, or you can just go look at the game itself or a different game. I have like four of them on my page. They're fine. And that's me. <laughs> uh, Zavery, do you want to reintroduce yourself to chat? And uh, if you have any plugs or shout outs, you usually have at least one shout out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Zavery, she, her. Um, my Twitter is also Zavery. Um, I have to shout out Peep. For, oh, it's our last Good well, Society Peeps show. Yeah. Uh-huh. Peeps for are patron, me, I would say. Um, borrow this dress at the last minute because I uh-huh. did not plan ahead. And um, my mom for letting me use this scarf as a veil also at the last second. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, uh, Ariel, do you want to reintroduce yourself to everybody? Hi. I'm Ariel, and she, her pronouns. I I don't really have anything to plug except for these beautiful people that I'm playing with. <clears throat> They're really great. Follow them. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Ariel the Gray, um, and that's all for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mace, do you want to introduce so sorry. yourself? <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry, Ariel, for cutting you off with what was a burp that turned to a cough at the same time. I didn't even know that. Yeah, really. I, I was distracted by the cat flying across the screen. I see. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I've just outed myself as Nate doing a weird sound. I didn't even need to. <laughs> um, tremendous. Sensational. Uh, I'm Mace. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. I have been playing Constance Farthing Bottom. Who else uses she, her pronouns? Um, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. That's where I'm the most unhinged. Uh, it's uh, Jennings underscore Macy. Um, my Instagram is Mason Jar Jenkins. Um, and I also uh, write and sell poetry in the form of little wax sealed envelopes. as almost like little letters. Um, those are available at Coffee Shop on the North Shore, but you can also look at the Instagram to find out where they are in person and order them via DMs. I've been writing a bonkers amount of love poems lately, I think just because of the nature of the nature of the season so if anyone is interested in those they are totally available and the instagram is pretty looking i don't really post on it very much but that's about that's about all it's good for uh yeah all those links are in chat uh so you can follow people on various platforms and check out what they're doing um i think we're gonna just jump right in to the story from here um we begin the second half of the finale of Good Society Arse and Farce with the wedding, the long-awaited wedding of Esther Peachtree, which is taking place in um, 
a church that I think we have decided is Bumridge uh, Chapel. Is that what it was? Uh, Bumridge Chapel. Um, and um, Xavier, you had already described the decor as being like very kind of, it sounded like kind of ostentatious. Um, a lot of pastels, not necessarily in Esther's style. Um, I think the music that's playing, um, oh, I don't know if this is even a thing, but like, I th I'm imagining it's like harpsichord instead of just a piano where it's like, there's no, uh, like harpsichords didn't really have the ability to do uh, different volumes and stuff. So it's very like, just, you know, even like pr pretty music, but like, you know, doesn't really have a lot of emotion behind it the way some other instruments would. Uh, this this music is playing. Um, and uh, Daniel Gibbons, Mr. Daniel Gibbons, is uh, standing up at the altar with uh, the pastor. Um, and uh, Zavery, do you want to describe what it looks like as... Uh, I, I Well, first, I guess Esther, or not Esther, um, Edith. Uh, would enter first as the flower girl. <laughs> um, so, what what is Edith wearing, and what uh, does it look like as she's as she's performing her flower girl duties? Um, I think that Edith's family kind of just, for better or for worse, treats her as like a little sort of centerpiece. So, I think that she is like decked out like she's got a, there's like this sort of day bonnet with like ruffles and flowers all over her you can hardly tell there's a child in there and she is taking her responsibility as flower girl very seriously like she's taking a step and dropping a few and then taking a step and dropping another few and she's like that's five that's three more. And it's like making sure that she has exactly enough to get to the end of the aisle. And then when she gets there, uh, she realizes that she's done her job and is like, whoo, thank God, thank goodness. And then goes to sit down. Um, yeah. Uh, also, um, two things I'll clarify, or not clarify, but mention. Uh, one, uh, if any of this is not accurate to Regency era, we will just assume that uh, the peach trees invented it, which is what we did with <laughs> the engagement party. They're new like, money. Maybe it's a new invention. Um, for entrepreneurs. Yeah. I'm a material girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other thing that I'll mention for the benefit of the players is Ariel and Mace, you both have uh, monolith tokens to spend um, in our last half. And... Um, Mace, Constance, has a monologue available to give, and Nicola has a monologue available to give, I believe. So just something to keep in mind uh, as we continue on. Uh, but Esther, uh, you are about to enter your wedding. Um, is there, uh, first, at the very least, what does this look like as you enter? But also... Um, is there anything that you're thinking about or anyone that you're talking to in these last few moments before you walk down the aisle? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think the only thing is that she is not wearing the necklace, even though Daniel does give it to her. Yeah. Yeah, um, Daniel sees you coming in, uh, you know, you're entering and everyone stands up, the music changes, this beautiful but dispassionate harpsichord music is playing as you enter, everyone is looking at you, uh, and you do see just a twinge of sadness from Daniel noticing that you're not wearing the necklace, not like devastated um and you can see he kind of shakes it off because like it doesn't really go with your dress like that's why you know maybe that's why you weren't wearing it in the first place um but he does notice um and i think let's hmm do we want to check in with nicola or do we want to check in with the farthing bottoms or <laughs> not farthing bottom 
as, as one of you now is. The, the bottom. Philip Snow. <laughs> Philip Snow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Former Bottom. Yeah. Um, former, former, former Bottom. I kind of like that a lot. <laughs> That also like has the energy of like Philip Flatass. <laughs> Philip Flatass. <laughs> they took your name and they took your ass. <laughs> you have nothing left. No money, no ass, no. I friends. got nothing. <laughs> no I have nothing. <laughs> I've decided to resort to piracy to reclaim my booty. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. I fully uh, want Phil to become a pirate. No matter what else happens, I am really rooting for Philip to be to be a pirate. Oh, I love that. I, I love that. that, that. <laughs> or, uh, Mark, uh, um, Again, yeah, so we've we... established he looks incredible with an eye patch. So true. So. Um, yeah, do we want to see, uh, do we want to see Philip and Constance, or is there anything, um, I guess, Nicola, are you just in the audience, or is there something else going on? No, I, I imagine I'm in the audience. Um, are there any farthing bottoms in here, I guess? <laughs> um, oh, for a specific reason, I'm going to go with what's happening with the farthing bottoms first, because whatever they're doing might determine where Mortimer is right now, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Um, yeah, sure. Constance and Philip racing towards the chapel. What is your plan for getting in? I'm picturing like. Yeah, no, we're like galloping side by side and Constance asks that very question because to be totally frank, she's like, I was just going to plan on knocking down the door and seeing what happened. <laughs> Philip was secretly thinking about sneaking in the back and kidnapping Daniel, but thinks it's a really bad idea. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Daniel's done nothing wrong. That that seems in poor taste. I'm really... Daniel's like no. already... That, this is why I need you in my life, Constance, to help clarify some poorly thought out plans this is what i've been saying but i'm glad that we're here now um i think we should go in the front just bust down the front door i don't think it's locked should we wait for there to be like a a moment or should we just <laughs> uh, well maybe we should, should we... see what it sounds like when we get there should we find a place to listen yeah like find a find a nook just... or like a window just peeking. <laughs> One brain cell between the two of them. <laughs> Mortimer deserves the <laughs> Mortimer deserves the inheritance. These two are useless. Um gosh. I need to Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> so since the plan is run, just just go in. Um, I will ask you, Tag, um, do you have some place that you want Mortimer to be? Um, like, do you have resolve tokens that you want to spend to have Mortimer be doing something I've specific? Got a, I've got a couple of tokens, uh, but I don't specifically need or want Mortimer doing anything, like, very particular. I, so... Yeah, I don't think Mortimer's here. Um, okay wasn't invited um isn't technically really supposed to be there anyway because the farthing bottoms and peach trees have this feud um so like i mean it's hilarious that i'm here <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and also i think the only reason he maybe would be here would be to talk to you but you have kind of been blowing them off so it's like well i'm not gonna be pushy i'm not gonna show up someplace i'm not explicitly yeah, yeah. wanted so i think yeah you're looking around in the chapel mortimer is not here yeah i'm i i just wanted to kind of check um and it's sort of fine if he is and fine if he isn't uh yeah i think i'm just in the audience yeah um 
I think, is there anything that we want to do before Constance and Philip bust into the wedding? <laughs> I think I'm going to suggest I take the reins of the horses and tell Constance just go on in and I'll be right behind her. Oh, I was planning on busting on the door on the horse. Oh, <laughs> totally. <laughs> the horse isn't leaving the situation. <laughs> Is James outside to do as security is is my other question um do well i'll i'll ask zavery do you think esther would would ask him to be keeping an eye out in that way um no i think that james is like in the wedding <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hey, it's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just bald head, open shirt. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, yeah. So, Philip, you, um, yeah. I guess you were gonna, you were gonna take the horses. What is Philip doing? To Philip's a little bit more hesitant because last time he crashed a peach tree uh, celebration and. It- he got a little beat up so i think he's gonna let um constance take the reins on this one <laughs> so yeah so speak. philip is waiting outside <laughs> the chapel um constance d- describe your entrance well <laughs> i think that yeah, I think that um, she probably leaves Philip at like maybe the at the entrance of the gates to like kind of keep an eye out for anything. I don't know anyone coming in and being like, "Stop that!" Um, and then like, yeah, pulls on the reins, um, like aims for the door, and it's just like, Whew. I said the door was open, <laughs> and just fucking bolts, <laughs> and with a big. Like, I pulls up the reins at the last minute, so it rears and just kicks the door open <laughs> and just, like, skids in and just is on, just fully on a horse in the church, just having busted in. I don't know at what point in the ceremony. It would be tight if it was where they asked if anyone objected. <laughs> just like Shrek. Is that what we want? <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll spend my last resolve token for that, Perfect. if that's the case. You spend your resolve token uh, is it weird that I just assumed that was the case? Yeah, <laughs> yeah why would it be any other time? <laughs> um, yeah, Esther, you and oh. Daniel are standing facing each other. Um, Daniel looks a, just a mix of sad and happy as this is happening. Mostly happy, um, but a little bit uncertain. Um, the music is playing. The the priest said, or whatever, pa- I don't know, pastor, reverend, says, <laughs> yeah, if there are any uh, objections to this union, speak now or forever hold your peace. There's silence for a moment. Then, <laughs> yeah, a horse kicks the door in. <laughs> comes, comes in. <laughs> Constance Farthing Bottom has arrived. <laughs> What happens next? I think she like rears on the horse for a minute. It's like, I'm pleased to say I have never wanted anything more in my whole life than I've wanted to stop this wedding. Oh my God. I think that Esther is just like, was already holding on to Daniel's hands, like squeezing too tight, like, like squeezing the life out of them. And then this happens and she's just like, frozen in shock and she kind of like waits for someone to react (laughs) everyone is looking at you including the person you're about to marry um oh my god so I like look at Daniel and then I like look at Constance and then I'm like I'm sorry, Daniel, I can't do this. And I like hike up my skirt like Julia Roberts. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! The it is on the horse. pandemonium. 
in Bum Ridge Chapel. Some people are like clapping. People are confused. Your dad, like, just <laughs> standing, just like fists clenched. No idea what to do right now. Um, ev- everything is going wild uh, as you run out, uh, run towards Constance. Um, yeah. What's. Can Philip come in and, like, aid her onto the horse? Oh, yeah, no, Constance yes. has, like, her hand she up, like, and it's gonna, like, pull and then, like, horse, smack like, the horse's ass over. as they gallop off. <laughs> All this fabric. <laughs> yes. I think as they're, like, going off, Constance is gonna, like, really smugly yell over her shoulder, no worries, Mr. Peachtree, she's not marrying a father bottom anymore! <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're going out. Philip, uh... I definitely William Peachtree is ha- already fists clenched, turns towards you, no idea of who to express anger towards, but just really projecting onto Philip, <laughs> um, starts fighting through the crowd of people uh, towards Philip. Um, Nicola, is there something, is there anything that you want to do as this is unfolding around you? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll. I would like to spend a resolve token. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you might not even make me, I guess. But uh, to in in the like jostling pandemonium, uh, Nicola is going to try and like because they're so graceful. Mm-hmm. Uh, just gonna look for the opportunity to trip someone near them. <laughs> Uh, to land on William Peachtree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, you can spend uh, your resolve token. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you don't necessarily need to, but we're wrapping things up. Uh, trip someone, Esther Peach or not Esther Peachtree, oh. William Peachtree goes down, now furious towards you because you had, <laughs> he already did I didn't like bump you. into him. I, someone else <laughs> yeah, did Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But you're, <laughs> He's not a big fan of Nicola either. Uh, just doesn't know who to be mad at. Just beyond himself <laughs> right now. Um, Philip, uh, what are you doing? I'm going to try to, to like, just, like, put my hand on Nicola's shoulder from behind and pull him back to escape. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I should go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you put the, your hand on their shoulder. Uh, Nicola, are you are you're running off with Philip? Oh yeah, yeah. No, cool. I'm gonna be in trouble if I don't leave. <laughs> uh, yeah, you and Philip get on Philip's horse. Constance and Esther are on Constance's horse. Um, and I think that's the perfect place to go to our epilogue, our final letter writing chapter, um, which takes place. Sometime after these events, uh, maybe a, a good amount of time, um, but really whatever you'd like. Um, and what this phase is supposed to be essentially is that each of you get to... Oh, actually, we also still have um, monologue tokens. Should we do that first? Because Constance hasn't given a monologue and Nicola hasn't given a monologue. And this would be a good time for either of yours as you're racing away from... Uh, from this wedding. Honestly, Constance's would just be like, if, if I'm allowed to like twist the rules a little bit, it, it would just be what she's saying to Esther as they're racing away. Yeah. What are you saying to Esther? Like, she's not. Racing away? Uh, for starters, um, I guess she'll just like, what I'm imagining is that like, she's got the reins and like Esther, like she pulled up Esther in front of her and has like the reins like around around her and have the reins in front of them and they're just like full gallop and it's like i'm sure this will ruin your dress and i'm very sorry but i couldn't think of any other way to get you out of there fast enough i hated this dress anyway (laughs) such a stupid dress (laughs) when we get home we'll tear it up and we'll burn it somewhere we'll use it for curtains or something (laughs) yeah uh, what about I me? love you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> of oh, course. 
so cute. Um, and she'll just be like, I like how you called it home. <laughs> well, well, that's what it is. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> It's so good. Yeah, you race towards your parish. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, yeah, what about Nicola? What about Nicola's internal monologue? You're racing away with uh, Philip Farlingbottom. Philip Bottom. Or <laughs> Philip, Philip Flatass. Flatass. I, well, maybe during the epilogue we'll figure out what Philip's last name is now. <laughs> oh, man, my face hurts from laughing. <laughs> um, I, I think as they're... Uh, uh mm -hmm. galloping away uh there's a point where nicola becomes aware that they don't know where they're going <laughs> they just sort of were going away yeah um and they're they're thinking about uh this this very ridiculous and dramatic moment that they just sort of uh witnessed <laughs> Um, and, uh, they think about the fact that they were, uh, looking for, they were looking to see if Mortimer was there and they're kind of going over why they wanted to see where Mortimer was. Um, and even as of this morning, uh, they had been thinking, um, Mortimer wants to take care of me and that's all I came here for uh but they also think about the conversation that they had with Philip not really the important parts but sort of the parts where it was the first time they were vocalizing just like I don't know why I'm in this house and I don't know how to cook <laughs> uh or just sort of live in here <laughs> um and I think that what they are thinking about as they're on the horse is that they don't want someone like Mortimer to be taking care of them. They would like to figure out how to fucking take care of themselves first. Um, is is there anything Philip is wanting to say as to Nicola as you're riding away? Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't think he knows how to say it. Um, one part of Philip wants to say, like, do you want to sell to South America with me? <laughs> Other part says, I kind of want, I lost my manner, um, and I want to help you with yours. Um, but Philip doesn't think he deserves any of it, so, uh, I don't know what he actually says. Maybe he says all that. <laughs> um, I mean, if he if he just it goes ahead and and says all yeah, that, let's think, say that. I think that would be the most dramatic and best option. <laughs> I, I I think as they're on the horse, Nicola is kind of like, oh, sorry, you can you couldn't know what I've been thinking about, but I've come to some conclusions about myself and my life and here's here's something i've realized philip i don't want to take care of you either <laughs> 100 valid but uh he, here's the thing i also don't want you to be homeless so i've got the house and it has too many rooms for me and let's let's just figure out what we're doing for once in our stupid lives I think that's a the best plan I've heard, and uh, I'll try my best to not let you worry about me. Yeah, onward. I mean, we'll see. I don't. I don't believe you, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> onward towards Rumpus Manor, apparently. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, roommates. <laughs> roommates. <laughs> oh my God, they were roommates. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now we will go over to the epilogue phase, uh, at which point each of you gets to write a letter, one letter, um, as your main character, um, to, to anyone really, uh, it can be to each other, um, but kind of establishing what, how the story ends for each of you. 
Um, who would like to go first? And if if all of you are thinking, I have uh, I have a couple of things that I could do for side characters that I can sprinkle in as well. Did you, know, you want this to be like? Did you say two years after or like um, could, a time? Could be any time. the The rules um, say something like a like a I think it says like a significant amount of time, but it doesn't say what so it can be different for each of you like one of you could have a letter that's two years later one of you could have a letter that's a few months later um it's it's really up to you and what you would like to express about um the rest of your character's life not the rest but at least for the purpose of this story i'm gonna think for um, a minute i had i had a thought for uh a letter which would be addressed to Constance. Um, and I don't think I'm going to try and figure out the exact phrasing of this letter. Mm -hmm. But I think Nicola is writing to Constance to um, invite her and Esther for uh, dinner um uh pointing out that uh Mortimer will also be there um I'm I'm imagining an invitation from uh yeah essentially from Nicola and Philip I don't necessarily know what that means their relationship is at this point but they live in the same house <laughs> oh, um <laughs> Uh, inviting Constance and Esther uh, to to dinner with them and Mortimer, and just uh, I don't know how long I think has passed since then, but I think a little while, um, maybe close to a year or something from that point. Um, just saying that the uh, that Rumpus Manor is you know coming along and. Um, uh, it, it's it's been a while since we all made time, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Constance is sort of the only person other than Philip who Nicola has been like normal, regular friends with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so. I was thinking for Philip that he does spend some time at the manor for a while but does end up trying to go out and find himself so maybe like two years in the future he's writing a letter back because he became a sailor i don't know if he necessarily resorted to piracy because he was trying to like get his reputation back not necessarily make it worse he's being um, an honest deckhand yes <laughs> um and i think he should write a letter back to his mother actually oh. um it's just kind of apologizing and say that he's found himself and will be coming home in hopes that his presence will be received with open arms and if not that's fine he understands why she wouldn't forgive him um but if she ever wants to reach out he'll be at rumpus manor um, Probably. what name does Philip sign this letter with? I think, can it just be Philip? Yeah. Philip, fat bottom girls. <laughs> fat bottom girls. <laughs> yeah, just signed Philip. Oh. Oh. Um, but probably on his, uh, yeah, on his sailing crew, uh, got the name uh flat ass probably <laughs> or half ass would be oh, maybe he half like half it was job well yes <laughs> yeah half -ass Philip. Half -ass. oh man that's good <laughs> that's so good <laughs> oh, that's really good we got there <laughs> um yeah what about constance and esther if you two both uh still need time to think i could uh, i could sprinkle in some things um i think that just, like I'm... yeah like two maybe like two weeks after 
the wedding, um, she writes a letter to Daniel, <laughs> just being like, I'm sorry um, about how everything turned out. And just like, I didn't do this like on purpose to hurt you. And I really thought that we were doing the right thing by getting married and so and so, but I just like, yeah, being like, I know that you probably will never forgive me, but um, I think I had to make the right decision for both of us. And hopefully you can find somebody who really um, like can see what a great person you are just stuff like that yeah james for instance (laughs) (laughs) Uh, or our hottest bachelor mortimer (laughs) yeah uh what about constance um i think speaking of the devil i think that she is going to um maybe like i'll say it's been maybe like six months on um, she's going to write a letter to Mortimer. I think that by then she and Esther have like totally have like tied the knot, have settled down in their parish. I don't think that she is like, I think that she's written back about the news and like news has certainly spread from like the insane chaos that she caused, <laughs> Yeah. but like hasn't, hasn't made any, like, uh, any big contact toward her family since then. But I think that she's going to write to Mortimer. Um, kind of talking about um uh saying in so many words since she didn't really have the chance to before that like she's not mad or she doesn't harbor any ill will because she was disinherited kind of explaining in the same way that she did to philip that it was the best thing that could have happened to her because she felt she was very tied down being the primary inheritor Mm -hmm. of the estate and for that reason she wants to impress upon him that whether he does decide to go into the military or if he decides to stay home or to continue his life as a scholar and like keep being a botanist that no matter what he does um he should remember that yes there is the farthing bottom family but that includes him so what he wants is automatically the desire of the entire family and and if he does nothing else then he should remember to listen to his own heart before considering the duties since all of it is on him now and she is just yeah sending that advice and on all the best wishes and telling him about all of the gardens that they're trying to put together and with love is help on on discerning which roots are comely and not and <laughs> all that jazz <laughs> um inviting them all to have to stay when they have when they are when they want to slash are able yeah um you get a letter back from Mortimer um which is um thanking you for your letter first of all um giving some updates on you know the estate um and um also mortimer lets you know uh that he's been seeing someone he's turned down the the (gasps) offer from the military um and i think uh says that his life has been much improved as of late um that he pretty much can do whatever he wants because he's the only hilda can't really tell him what to do <laughs> <Inherit> him. <laughs> um, uh, and uh he he kind of like is speaking a little bit like around the topic um but says that um, unfortunately the rift between the farthing bottoms and the peach trees still exists and in fact has only gotten worse uh, with regards at least to Hilda and William. Um, But uh, that the uh, farthing bottom side has gotten a little bit stronger as uh, Daniel Gibbons uh, and Mortimer have been seeing each other and plan to be wed. Um, Daniel, having been very dissatisfied with his experience with the Peachtree family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> and he says something that he would, they would like to, uh, well, he would like to visit. Uh, Daniel <laughs> is not interested. Um, but this says is... that he's sure that um, with time uh, that he would love to have you and Philip and Esther to the Farthing Bottom Estate. Um, and kind of mentions a little bit slyly that, you know, Hilda is getting older, so it's only a matter of time before he'll really <laughs> have, have control. <laughs> um, and, uh... All right! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's very delicately, and, and not quite like, oh, she's gonna die, but even just like, you know, I might have to, you know, be the executor of the estate and everything like that um, as, she's, as she's getting older. And I think, uh, does anybody have any last little things that they want to say uh, for their characters or for the story we've told today? It seems like everything ended very nicely. <laughs> if it didn't go without saying, I just think that Esther and Costas have the cutest cottage core ass life. For sure. yes. And it's and it's just adorable. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, this has been lovely. Thank you all so much for playing this game with me. Um, it's, so it's been so nice. <laughs> I've loved all your characters. I, uh, I've loved all of the things that we've done. Uh, this has been a great first limited series for me. I'm very excited. Um, and before we sign off, I'll throw it over to each of you to uh, any last minute plugs or things that you want to say to chat uh, before we wrap up. And I think this time we'll start, let's start with Savory this time. Um, Savory, do you have any last minute things that you want to tell chat? Chat? <laughs> I'm Savory. Um, and my Twitter is Savory and my pronouns are she, her. And I want to, of course, shout out to Peeps. 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 And to my mom for watching. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed. Have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Ariel, what about you? Any last minute things you want to say to chat? Just thank you for watching. It's been nice to have people. Oh, Peeps. Oh, hi, Peeps. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to have a little audience. Um, I had a really great time. So I hope we can do something again like this soon. It was pretty great. Yeah. Um, Tag, you can go next. Anything that you want to say to chat before we wrap up? Oh, just thanks for hanging out. I was going to do the thing where I try and plug something that I didn't do. But then I couldn't remember what any of my friends are currently <laughs> trying to get plugged. So I just... Oh, it is zine month. I got nothing. Do you want to talk it about zine month. zine month at all? Uh, sure. I'm always talking about TTRPGs on here. And I mean, usually it's the ones that I've made that I'm bringing up. But right now it's zine month. Um, if you use Twitter, uh, look for things with the hashtag Zimo, Z-I-M-O. Um, and you will find a lot of incredibly cool product projects that are trying to get um, simple physical zines printed. Um, and some of the stuff people are putting out are standalone adventures for particular systems, entire games in zines. Um, there's some really, really cool and exciting stuff. And if you like supporting uh, small indie creators, it's a, it's a really cool uh, it's a really cool time to see a bunch of new stuff. Um, Melanie just mentioned uh, one that Elliot just released, your friend Elliot. Oh my gosh, yes. Elliot, who was on uh, the uh, stream on my channel of my game, OK Cryptid, um, is, uh, has released physical copies of their game Into the Fey Woods, um, which I think was the second game of theirs that I came across, but it was the one that like, I had read another game of theirs that I loved, and then I came across Into the Fey Woods and was like, I'm going to just follow stuff that you make. Because <laughs> um, it's all so up my alley. Um, yeah, that is uh, uh, at Elliot Silvarian on Twitter uh, for, for their stuff. Um, and it's great, and I really want one of those physical copies. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mace, what about you? Anything that you want to say to chat before we go? Uh, 
yeah thank you so much for watching this has been such a riot i really really enjoyed this this game on the whole and this whole this whole section of it was just so much fun um you can follow my socials if you want uh and follow the poetry instagram if you're interested in getting anything like that or just seeing the occasional things that i post um and yeah thanks for hanging this is great <laughs> Yeah, um, I think with that, um, I am going to leave the Zoom call in just a second if you all want to hang out for just a minute so I can properly thank you off stream. Um, but this is your chance to say goodbye to chat and also to say goodbye to YouTube <laughs> for anyone watching the VOD. Uh, do you want to <laughs> wave? Uh, do you want to wave goodbye? Hi, Bye, Chad, and thank you to Taylor for running this. And yeah, it all thank you, Taylor. It was so much fun. <laughs> thank yeah. you all, um, and goodbye, goodbye, YouTube. Um, I will still be with you. Bye, YouTube, chat. and Chad. Bye, Bye chat, and YouTube.